carry their entire team. So their offenses are going to have to run the football now. That's not just because it's wet and sloppy out there. It's to take the pressure off of these struggling young quarterbacks. For the first time in the last five games, the New York Giants have a healthy, a healthy enough starting offensive line intact. And lately, that has really helped out Rodney Hampton. He appears to be back in Pro Bowl form. You're right, and the whole Giants run game is back on track. However, the Redskins may have the edge. Now, they struggled on the ground earlier this season, but for the past five weeks, they've averaged 110 yards per game. Add that to the fact that the Giants' defense is depleted with three of their starters banged up. Keith Hamilton on the line is out. Carlton Bailey's got a bad shoulder. He's the middle linebacker, and the strong safety Jarvis Williams is also out. But the question still remains, are the Redskins good enough to take advantage of New York Giants' weaknesses on defense? That question will be answered here this afternoon at RFK. Brad Del Weiso ready to kick it away. The Redskins receive the opening kickoff. And back inside the five, Tyrone Rush. Decent return out across the 25, shy of the 30. Brought down on the play by John Booty. Heath Schuler leads the Washington offense onto the field. Back as the starting quarterback, protected by a very good offensive line, and they rotate in the middle with some backups from the bench. The running backs, Ricky Irvins and Cedric Smith. The wideouts, Henry Ellard and Desmond Howard. And the tight end, former Raider, is Ethan Horton. That's Ellard in motion on first down, and Schuler gives to Irvins. He tries the right side, drags a pile with him, and picks up four. And we'll give you a look at the Giants' defense. Up front, they're banged up, as Tim Green told you. Mike Strahan gets the start along with Eric Howard and Mike Fox, but Coleman Rudolph will be the starter in place of Keith Hamilton. The linebacking position, Corey Widmer was the expected starter. However, Carlton Bailey did make the start at middle linebacker. But we will see Widmer this afternoon, and there's the secondary. Randolph Booty, Campbell, and Felipe Sparks is back in the lineup for the Giants. On second down, a pickup of a couple. We'll call it three for Ricky Irvins, and that'll bring up a third and short and this is for the Washington Redskins. And this is exactly what the Redskins want to do all day long, Joe. They want to be third and short. They don't want to, actually, they're not too short, but they don't want to be third and long and force Schuler into a known passing situation. A good look at first year head coach Norv Turner. Last three seasons, offensive coordinator in Dallas. Third and four. Schuler, his first pass of the day, Titus Winans, that is incomplete, dropped. And the Redskins will have to punt. Winans could not find the handle. Thomas Randolph there defensively for the Giants. Boy, Thomas Randolph really has picked it up this season. Of course, he is a rookie, and as any rookie, it takes time to get used to your position. He's really becoming accustomed. Watch him there. Perfect position on the receiver, perfect play. Reggie Roby. Leads the NFL in punting yardage average. David Meggett back deep. He's number one in the NFL and returns with an average of 14.8 a return. Roby, a poor kick. Meggett on the return. Cannot shake the first tackler. Brought down by Tyrone Rush. And the New York Giants offense will take over at their own 34 after a 43-yard punt and a five-yard return. And back to work. Giants quarterback Dave Brown made the start on Monday night in Houston knocked out with a concussion back as the starter protected by this offensive line which is back intact the running backs behind Dave Brown Rodney Hampton and Kenyon Rashid the wide receivers Callaway and Sherrard and the tight end is Howard Cross first possession of the day for the Giants Rodney Hampton tries out the left side and finds one. Well, the Giants like to run the ball to the left, right behind Jumbo Elliott and William Roberts. You get the feeling they will be attacking that side of the Washington defense, and we'll give you a look at Howard Cross. 
Yeah, he's part of the reason the Giants have picked up the run game there. And you see him with the block, kind of combo block with Jumbo Elliott. It always makes it easier when you got Jumbo helping you on the block. Rodney Hampton checks out. David Meggett in the backfield behind Brown on second down. Brown hangs in, can't get it to Sherrard, who has been complaining lately that he has not had enough action from Dave Brown. Well, Brown had the heat on him on this play, and he stepped up, and he really didn't have a lane to hit Sherrard in. You see Sherrard coming right across the middle, but the ball is right at the ref. I mean, the ref could have caught that, either caught it or would have raised, taken him to a soprano. <laughs> now third down. Third and nine. out has plenty of time has room to run he'll try it out and he's forced out of bounds well short of a first down as Tony Woods the left defensive end was there for Washington well Dave Brown does have those mobile feet but if you're gonna go mobile on third down the only way you want to cross that line of scrimmage is if you know you can go all the way to the marker and get the first down if not you got to just hang back there, shuffle around around near the near the sideline and get that ball downfield for a safe pass. Mike Horan back to punt for the Giants. So as it was with Washington, three plays and out. It is with New York. You got a shot of Brian Mitchell, who is back deep to receive the punt for the Washington Redskins. He is a good one. Number two in the NFL. 74 yards is his longest return of the year and he does have one punt return for a touchdown. So time for the Giants to punt. And you get the feeling going in especially now with the field the way it is this is going to be a defensive struggle. Haran back inside his own 25 waiting for the snap. Good snap by Bishop. Very returnable for Mitchell outside his own 20. And he gets it out near the 30 yard line. He'll be brought down at the 29. 40 yard punt, eight yard return, and a couple of the players start to rough it up after the play. Now Andre Collins got into a scuffle with Jesse Campbell. So after that punt, the Washington Redskins have the ball for the second time today. No score. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Mitsubishi, the new thinking in automobiles. By the new Gillette Sensor XL with micro fins that set up your beard for the world's best shave. By McDonald's, the official restaurant of the National Football League. And by Blockbuster Video. Make it a blockbuster night. Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. And a look at head coach Dan Reeves, who has had an up-and-down season. Started out 3-0. and Now they've struggled to a record of 4-7. and Quick pass out into the flats and dropped. Looking for the fullback, Cedric Smith. And he couldn't hang on. So the second pass of the day, incomplete. 0 for 2 so far for Heath Schuler. Well, North Turner wants to mix it up on first down. He wants to throw some passes and let Schuler mix it up so he's not that predictable, not just run. But when they do throw the ball on first down, it's going to be the short pass to the running backs and the tight ends. Second down and 10. Two tight ends set into the game for the Redskins. That's Jenkins in motion. And the give is to Brian Mitchell. Big yards over the middle and a Washington first down. A pickup of 11. And Mitchell picks up the first first down of the day. Again, we said at the beginning of the, of the game that the Redskins have got their run game back on track. You take a look at it here. What Mitchell does is he cuts it back. It's a classic cutback. He gets the Giants defense going one way. He cuts back the other way and gets himself into the secondary. He stays in the backfield. And again, it's Jenkins in motion. And again, it's the same exact play. And the same result. First down, Washington exactly the same play only this time they picked up 12 instead of 11. Yeah and this time Mitchell didn't cut it back. He went with the flow found the seam and kept it going. So 
really playing on the Giants' reaction because I'm sure the Giants got into the huddle and said, hey, when he starts to flow, watch the cutback. And you see some of the players hanging back to the right of the screen. Mitchell just keeps going this time. He picked up 12 in a Washington first down. Now Ellard in motion. And the give is to Irvin. Ricky Irvin's brought down at the 41 of New York. A pickup of eight. Michael Strahan there on the tackle for the Giants. Well, we talked about the temptation of the Redskins to run against the banged up Giants defense. Part of that, part of that mismatch is going to be Jim Lachey against Michael Strahan. Irvin's checks out. Brian Mitchell in the backfield. For Washington on second down and three. Mitchell. Nothing. Defensive coordinator for the New York Giants is Mike Nolan trying to figure out a way to stop the Redskins today. Well, he just stopped them. <laughs> he just stopped them on that play. So whatever you did, Mike, do that again a couple more times and you'll be all set. Mr. Inspiration is back. Lawrence Taylor on the sidelines. He's been a part of pregame speeches lately. He was there in Houston. Pumped up the Giants and New York came away with a win to snap a seven game losing streak. Now that defense which LT used to be a part of faces a third and three. Little play action and Schuler. No one on that side of the field. And a first down Washington inside the 35 and that's what Heath Schuler can give you. Very mobile, very athletic. And that's also part of the plan to take the pressure off of your young quarterback. Run the football, run the football, throw the pass. If you're going to throw it, throw it short on first down, and then you mix it up with something like this where you just run him on the naked boot. He runs out, and he's got the option. He can throw it if he's got a receiver wide open. If not, he plays it conservative and runs. Pick up of seven and a first down for Washington. Seventh play of the drive right here and a handoff to Irvins. Met by Michael Brooks and a loss on the play. Boy, Tim Green, if there is one player on this Giants team who has had a fantastic year, you're looking at him, Michael Brooks. Yeah, when you talk about an inspirational guy, you see Lawrence Taylor on the sideline. But you can't get as much inspiration on the sideline as you can from a guy who's right in the middle of the defense and making a play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. You'll see Michael Brooks make more than one of those this afternoon. A loss of two on the play, so second and 12. Schuler over the middle, the fullback Smith incomplete. Jesse Armstead was there along with Michael Fox for the Giants. Well, once again, you see that short pass, Joe, but if you're going to run that short pass, part of that game has got to be those running backs pulling the ball in. So far, we've seen two short passes and two dropped passes. And Schuler is 0 for 3. Six defensive backs check into the game on third and 12. The ball resting on the Giants 36. Schuler. A quarterback draw pulled down shy of a first down but better field goal position for Low Miller. The quarterback draw picks up 10. Well they want Heath Schuler to, to come in and take charge of this game but believe me they don't want him running up the middle of the field like that and taking the kind of shots he takes on this play. Look at I'll tell you though it looks almost like it was a design quarterback oh, I'll draw. You, I'll guarantee you that was a design quarterback draw. Well I, you know with the way the quarterbacks have been taking the punishment and abuse and the concussions and getting knocked out I can't imagine running that play on third and 10. 43 yard field goal try for Low Miller trying to put the Redskins on top chip is good and the Washington Redskins before a big crowd at RFK takes an early first quarter lead these folks are packed in here on a miserable day weather wise but chip Low Miller warms it up good from 43. 
A rainy day in D.C. and the Redskins grab a lead. Great crowd as you would expect at RFK with these fans. Tim you were down on the field before the game. What's this field feel like? What kind of condition is it in? Well right now it's in pretty good shape but you're going to see it getting pocked up as the day goes on and it's going to get sloppier and sloppier. David Megan from his own 15 on the return and big yards out to the 35. Brought down by Martin Bayless. And we'll give you a look at the giant offensive line as they trot onto the field. Such a big day in the trenches. A big day in the pit between these two offensive lines and the respective defensive lines. And this offensive line for the Giants has been banged up. Well, they're banged up, but as you said, they're back together for the first time in five weeks. They got the whole starting unit in there. And really, even before this week, they started to gel on the ground game. With Callaway in motion, a delayed handoff to Hampton. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage, plus half a yard, not much. Well, when it's a sloppy day like it is today, Joe, you don't want to do too much delaying. You want to get to the hole and get there quick, because the more time you give those defensive linemen to get their feet underneath them, the better they're going to be at getting into the hole and making the tackle on the line of scrimmage. Second down and nine for the Giants. Flag on the play as the handoff is to the fullback with Sheed. He got back to the line of scrimmage, but there is a marker down on the play. The other thing about a field like this, if it's going to get sloppier and sloppier, you want to score fast. You want to score early. We get the call from our referee, Tom White. Offsides, number 78 defense. Five yards, still second down. That'll bring up a second and four. Yeah, like I said, when the field is like this and the field is going to go downhill and deteriorate, it really makes the points you score in the first and second quarter almost twice as valuable as the ones you score later on because points are going to become harder and harder to get. Second and four, Rodney Hampton. Right through the heart of the line. He comes up a yard short of a first down. And we give you a Central Division update on a McDonald's game break. Here's James Brown. All right, Joe, the Bucks were looking to break a six-game losing streak. That is until Warren Moon goes 40 yards to Kadri Ismail. Post pattern. They're down by two at this point. Moon comes back, finds Chris Carter in the end zone. It's all tied at 17. 111 left. Back to Joe. All right, JB, thank you. Third and two for the Giants. Trailing by three, Rodney Hampton finds a first down. He picked up five. Well, the Giants went through this series right here with a luxury that they'd love to have all day because they ended up, because of the offsides, second and five. And when you want to run the ball, you can't, you can't have a better ground game than when you're second and five. It gives you two cracks to get five yards. And with this line, the way that they've been shaping up, and with Rodney Hampton, the way, as you said, has picked up his game back to last season's form, you know they're going to get it. They did, and so a fresh set of downs. On first down, Brown to the air, and he finds Callaway and another giant first down. Pick up of 13. Well, Dave Brown was criticized and kind of harangued by Mike Sherrard for not getting him the ball as much. But Dave Brown just said, hey, it's natural for me to want to go to Chris Callaway because we worked together the entire season last year throwing the ball and catching the ball as a unit because they were both on the second team. So he's real. I mean, Callaway to him is like one of those old gloves. Which would come in handy on a day like this in Washington. A toss to Hampton. Martin Bayless brought him down, but a pickup of nine, and the Giants offense starting to crank it up. And you said Hampton's back to his form, and that's his form right there, because what he did is he found the crack in the line, he accelerates through the seam, and then he adds a little extra, a little spice to it, something extra. When he gets downfield, you hear the pads popping as he punishes the defensive backs. And look at Jumbo Elliott with a block on Palmer. He gets the block, and then he puts a little shoulder pad on him to boot. Adds a little injury to insult. Second 
second down and one. Play action pass. Brown airs it out for Sharar. Pass interference as a flag flies and Daryl Green pleads his case. Tom White will get the call, but a flag went down, and this will be pass interference on Washington, it looks like, as the entire procession moves down near the Redskin goal line. This will cost the Redskins. Pass interference, number 28, defense. Mike Sherrard shows his nine years of experience in the NFL on this play because what he does is he just slows up and keeps his body position between himself and Daryl Green, forcing Green into the pass interference. Sherrard did that. That was a wily trick of a veteran. He just slowed his body up, forced Green to come over the top. On first and goal, Rodney Hampton. Brought down as flags fly on the play. Washington with a three to nothing lead. But the Giants down near the Redskin goal line and will get the call. That was a carry on first and goal, and Tom White will let us know. Still talking it over. Number 59, offense. Play game. 12 men on the field. Defense. Penalties offset. Replay play first down. You could see the reaction of Brian Williams when he heard the hold. And then his head turned when he heard penalty on the defense. <laughs> We're going to try it again. Yeah, well, he's right there in, in the middle of the screen. And that's a big break for him. And watch Hampton just running. You talk about running when there's no hole. I mean, all he sees is bodies there, but he knows that goal line's only a few yards away, but that's a dedicated runner. When you just see bodies, you just put your head down, your shoulder down, and burrow into them. So again, it's first and goal. Hampton. Down to the one. The Giants come into this game with a record of four and seven. The Redskins two and nine, but these two teams are going to bang it out here this afternoon. This is a classic day weather-wise, and we're glad you're with us. Second down and goal coming up for the Giants. A three tight end set for New York. Touchdown, Brown. Dave Brown scores his second touchdown rushing this year, and the Giants grab a lead. Well, that's one of the advantages of having a quarterback that can scramble, that's not afraid to turn it upfield to run the boot. This time, he didn't do it naked. He had a little protection from Kenyon Rashid on this play. So they ran the play action up the middle, and then Hampton had to sell himself and bring those defenders, suck those defenders in. Now David Treadwell on for the extra points. And the Giants lead it by four. An eight-play drive covering 65 yards. And behind a healthy offensive line, the Giants answer. The Redskins with a field goal, the Giants with a touch. Well, this is the perfect play to run against this defense because you've got 57 Ken Harvey hitting this gap. And then you've got Andre Collins out here. He's got to cover the tight end on this play. And there's nobody out there to contain Dave Brown. You see Harvey comes inside and then he's got to go all the way outside and he just can't get there. So the Giants punch it in and lead 7-3, and Brad Del Wieso 
Gets rid of it with Mitchell and Rush back deep. This is Brian Mitchell. Big yards, a flag on the play. And Mitchell brought down shy of the giant 40. Corey Widmer there for the tackle, but flags all over the field. Nothing. Thing makes Brian Mitchell sicker than to get a run like that on a day like this and turn around and see those yellow handkerchiefs laying out there on the field. Not just one, but two. And the officials will talk it over after a 52 yard return, and it looks like that will be negated. Reeves, an interested party, waiting on the sideline, and this will be against the Washington Redskins and will negate a 52-yard return by Brian Mitchell and march the Skins closer to their goal line. These officials are having a tough time already in the first quarter getting together on calls and marking the spot of the football. During the return, holding number 37. Penalty is declined. Illegal block in the back. Number 96 during the return. That penalty is accepted. First down for Washington. Timeout. Well, whenever you get two flags dropping, Joe, the officials have got to have a little bit of a conference. They got together. They talked it over. And it cost the Redskins a 52-yard return from Mitchell. It's a cold, rainy afternoon in D.C. Beautiful. Beautiful for football <laughs> here in the nation's capital. And the Redskins have the ball down by four. First and ten from their own 15. Ricky Irvins with a cutback in big yards. Booty there to bring him down, but not before Irvins picked up 12 and a first down. And once again, you see that run game going right at Michael Strahan. Again, Jim Lachey, number 79, the big tackle, is against 92, Strahan, and that's a size mismatch. Strahan's about 6'4". Actually, he's, a, he's not blocking him on that play. They just let Strahan go up the field. Lachey closed down on the inside on Keith Hamilton. And Irvin's picked up 12. Now it's Mitchell's turn. Mitchell brought down as he crossed the 35, a pickup of nine. It's been Mitchell one play, Irvin's the next. The two give each other high fives and, and switch places. They're, they're running the same play because Lachey is going to block down and clo close off the wall. Strahan comes up and he gets himself out of the play, so there's a natural hole there. This time Lachey took on Strahan and one of the other Strahan didn't know which way to go. Come <laughs> upfield right. or lay back and take on the block. Oh, yeah, you're right. He came upfield on the one play and on, on that play I was wrong. He didn't. He came upfield but Lachey sat and then came out. So he's getting knocked by Lachey. He's getting knocked by the running back. And the Redskins seem to have found a soft spot in that run defense of the Giants. So much so that they've rushed for 72 yards here in the first quarter. The giant solution to that is going to be to stack 94 Michael Brooks over on that side and try to compensate. He's their best defensive player. That's how you fix it. He's over there now on second and less than one. And Irvins is pushed back by the Giants defense. He did get enough however for a first down so. What we thought might happen has indeed happened. It's run, 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 and a pass mixed in just to keep the defense honest. And again, what this does is it takes the pressure off Heath Shuler. You're not forcing him into the third and long situation where he's got to throw the ball deep downfield. Now on first down, they can mix it up and try to go to that short passing game. Schuler on first down, intercepted by Booty. His receiver Howard fell down. Booty back the other way. And a big return. Down at the 30. 
Booty, Booty looked like uh, Walter Payton on that play, didn't he, Joe? The way he was sidestepping and coming up the middle and hopping over, leaping over people. That's just a great run. And here he's Schuler. This is the play where he wants to go short to the safe pass. He doesn't want to go downfield deep. Desmond Howard had slipped. Not the end of the first quarter that the Redskins had hoped for. The Giants lead by four. On a rain-soaked day in Washington, D.C., John Booty comes away with the first interception of the day. The Redskins have zero yards passing. Not a good start for Heath Schuler. Yeah, and Heath Schuler did exactly what he did not want to do this game, which is on first down, go to the deep, riskier ball downfield. He wants to throw those underneath passes. He paid the price in interception, and now the Giants, who have the lead, and to Hampton, who picks up two, brought down at the 28. When you talk about first half points being important the Giants have a golden opportunity here to rack up some more points and you have to figure with the way it's raining here this afternoon that by the end of the day this field is going to be a mess especially right in the middle of the field where the teams are going to be running the ball. Second down and eight. Brown over the middle finds Hampton. Rodney Hampton brought down by Andre Collins a pickup of four. Well the Giants as you can see both teams have run the ball a heck of a lot more than they've thrown it and as the game goes on that's what you're going to see more and more of those same kind of numbers. Third down and four for the Giants. the rush and he's brought down Ken Harvey was there along with Lamont Hollenquest and Brown brought down behind the line of scrimmage and that'll bring up a fourth down Brown just has nowhere to go downfield and he thinks he sees a hole and he might have except for Harvey's too quick Harvey committed himself inside opened up the lane but he's got the quickness and even on this sloppy field the athletic ability to get back out put the hit on Dave Brown David Treadwell will try a 43 yard field goal that kick is way short and the Giants after the interception and the good return by John Booty come up empty the Redskins take over and they trail seven to three. Fox NFL Sundays brought to you by Mercedes Benz, where safety, reliability, performance, and value are never optional. By Athlat, insuring over 38 million people worldwide. By Heineken, the number one imported beer. Heineken, just being the best is enough. And by the Citizen Watch Company. Citizen is how the world tells time. The Washington Redskins take over, down seven to three. What's the lead? What's the lead? Yeah. And on first down, Schuler hands to Ricky Irvins. He picked up three over the middle. When it's cold and wet, rainy like this on a day like today, Joe, and you got steam coming out of your mouth, you can either look at it two ways. You can either say, "Oh man, I'm cold," and you start shivering and stamping your feet, or you can pretend you're eight or nine years old in the backyard you know playing one of those pickup games and that's when you love the mud and a day like today you can go either way you can feel the cold or you can enjoy the mud on second down and seven and they send smith in motion and hand to Irvins. big hole over the middle and ricky Irvins in the open brought down from behind at the 15 we just saw terrific speed by Irvins and even better from Thomas Randolph to chase him down. That's a great play for a rookie to make. It's a great play for Irvins and the runner to hit the hole as quick as he did and then accelerate. But you have to credit Thomas Randolph for saving this touchdown and you're going to get to see two acts of speed here. Watch Irvins hit the hole and you see the Giants player slipping around and then he just burns booty 
and then it's a foot race. It's a foot race, and Randolph wins it. Nice presence of mind and nice speed by the rookie. And now on first down, they check in Reggie Brooks. And he doesn't find much. Reggie Brooks, this could be a day where Reggie Brooks gets back into the fold for the Redskins. Yeah, and you know what, though? You saw how he hesitated at the line of scrimmage because he had nowhere to go. When a runner hesitates like that today, he's not going to get any yards at all because you got to hit the hole like Irvin's did on the last play and hit it quick. Watch him hesitate here. He gets the ball, and then he hesitates. Forget it now because Mike Fox is going to be sitting in that hole waiting for you, and then you're going to get piled up by the linebacker. Pick up with only one, so second down and nine. Schuler nearly picked off by Widmer as it was in and out of the hands of Cedric Smith. Well, now we really can't blame Heath Schuler because he's doing what he has to do. He's going to his running backs. Those running backs are getting out and getting into the zones, the soft spots of the Giants' defense. And when he does it, those running backs have got to catch the ball. Watch Fox. In there in the middle of the screen, 93. He's battling away against two guys and gets his hands up. Heck, if he keeps doing that, he'll knock one of these passes down, especially if it's a short one to the running back. Now third and nine. And Schuler needs a timeout. Heath Schuler wants to talk it over. He goes over to talk to Coach North Turner. Washington knocking on the door. North Turner has had to spin the wheel and come up with a quarterback each week. We've seen Freeze, we've seen Schuler, and Gus Ferrat. And for each of these guys, Joe, if you look right down here along this bottom line, you see the INTs, and that is really what's killed the Washington Redskins this season. They're minus 17 in turnovers, last in the league. Third down and nine. Schuler gets rid of it. He finds Irvins, but short of a first down. A pickup of only three. And the first completion of the day for Heath Schuler, and we've got 10.52 and counting remaining in the first half. Yeah, and a nice heads up play by Schuler to stand in there, to take the heat, feel the heat, get knocked down, but deliver that ball. To, to the running back. Unfortunately, on this play, he's got third and nine. You can't throw the short pass on third and nine. That's when you got to throw the long pass. Now Chip Lowmiller on to try a 29-yard field goal. Lowmiller was good from 43 yards earlier. He's good from 29, and he closed the gap to one point. Chip Lowmiller, one of the strongest legs in the NFL and on a day like this the exchange is so important yeah well it's a tight snap and a perfect hold and like you said that's a tough thing to do when it's sloppy and muddy and wet look at that turf flying Chip Lowmiller two for two and it's a seven to six game which I guess is our segue to Madonna she left home in search of a dream <laughs> she played by her own set of rules because she knew one day she'd become the most famous woman on earth. You know who she is. Now see who she was before she became Madonna. Don't miss Madonna. Innocence Lost, a world premiere movie, Tuesday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Well, after this game, we're going to dry out a little bit, have some dinner and a couple cold drinks, and then I, I'm going to have you explain to me how a 7-6 to six game is a segue to Madonna. Okay. We try to work it in any way we can. <laughs> Well, yeah, you, you can't just say it's a segue and make it a segue. You got to have something going there, you know? I, I tried. Like maybe it's a close shave or something like that, a close, I don't know. To try. Yeah. Chip I, guess, Lowe I guess you're better off just saying a segue. Let's just do the game. Chip Lowmiller ready to kick it away for the Redskins with David Meggett back deep. He's joined by Arthur Marshall back there. And after a 29-yard field goal, the New York Giants lead is just a point. Ten twenty remaining in the first half, and Lowmiller gets rid of it. David Meggett from inside is ten. A lot of pads pop 
diving and Meggett brought down at his own 25. Lamont Hollenquest taking bows after that special teams tackle. A lot of people wonder why David Meggett isn't more involved in that Giants offense. And you mentioned the pop of the pads on that special teams play right there. And David Meggett, let's face it, has taken quite a bit of punishment this season, especially early in the year when he was not only returning kicks, but he was taking the load for Rodney Hampton when he was hurt. So David Meggett is a guy who has felt the pain of an NFL season as much as anybody this year. On first down, Callaway in motion. And with a give to Hampton, big yards across the middle, he picked up nine. Brought down by the strong safety, Martin Bayless. You don't have to tell Rodney Hampton about not hesitating in the backfield. Right there, he just veered and worked around and found the hole and kept going and he knows that on a day like today you want to just get going you don't want to hesitate and stop he's he's a true mutter eight carries for Hampton 30 yards <laughs> on second and one here's Hampton again he hits the hole running and finds a first down he got three Tim Johnson brought him down. Well, Tim Johnson's a guy who loves a game like this. He told us yesterday he loves to get in there. Hey, I know they're going to run at me. I know I'm going to have the big bodies on me. I love getting in there, battling around. I'm either going to put you down or you're going to put me down. That time he made the stop, but Hampton picked up three and a first down for the Giants. Tries the right side this time, and he's brought down just shy of the 45. Tony Woods was there for the Redskins along with Andre Collins. Well, that's a nice change-up play for the New York Giants because when we talked earlier about the middle of the field getting torn up and churned up, as that middle gets sloppier, the outside towards the numbers gets more and more inviting because if Hampton can get out there on that sure ground, he can get his footing a little better and make some cuts. Second down and three. Rodney again. Whoa. Tim Johnson. <laughs> well, you, uh, he might have had one of those little transistors and heard what you said about him not putting Hampton down, or he put him down, but he didn't stop him. Boy, that time... He puts him down and he stops him. Take a look at him right here, coming up into the line and then just getting under David Meggett. He fights off, spins around William Roberts, then he just hooks him up, gets right underneath him and just puts the takedown on him. See, that's Rodney Hampton. That's not David Meggett. You're just a typical ex-defensive lineman. He don't care if Did you I... see the pigskin, pick him up and <laughs> uh, drive him those down. Those names are all interchangeable, especially if you've been hit in the head as many times as I have. Here comes another one. Here, here we go. Here's a test for you. Aflac trivia. What was the highest scoring game in NFL history? Uh, you know I'm not going to get this. Think about it. We'll come back and we'll give you the answer after this. Our Aflac trivia. What was the highest scoring game in NFL history? Well, exactly 28 years ago today. New York Giants and the Washington Redskins scored a combined total of 113 points as the Redskins beat the Giants 72 to 41 at D.C. Stadium. Same site, different name. Well, they're not going to score that many today, but you know, that's how you know that there's a rivalry when 72 points are put up on the board and one team's just rubbing it in. I can add to that. On third and three, Brown throws behind Sherrard. And then Brown is dumped. Time for the Giants to punt. You talk about rubbing it in. We'll talk about that after this incomplete this pass. This is the second time Mike Sherrard has been coming right across the middle untouched. And then Dave Brown puts the ball behind him. And then he gets a hit and he gets the suplex by Palmer, number 97. Talked about rubbing it in on that Affleck trivia. Charlie Gogolak with five seconds left kicks a field goal to make it. 
72 to 41. That's what I'm saying. That's bad blood. That's that's a, what a rivalry is all about. We got 69 points in a couple seconds left. Heck, make it 72. Fair catch called for by Brian Mitchell on a beautiful punt by Mike Coran. 42 yards and not returnable. And the Redskins down seven to six have the ball and the offense back to work. We'll see what Heath Schuler can do after this. The Giants out in front seven to six with under seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. And the Redskins have the ball again and the fans here at RFK trying to stay away from the rain. That's hard to do on a day like this. First down from their own 14. And Schuler hands to Irvin. Big yards over the left side brought down by Jesse Campbell after Irvin's picked up seven. Boy, it's a good thing Michael Strahan got his hands on Irvin's shoelaces and slowed him down a little bit because if he doesn't, Irvin's might still be running on one of those long runs. You see Irvin's here cutting up. He finds the hole. Watch Strahan. Just slows him down long enough. Well, he didn't get his shoestring. He got his belt loop. Just enough to slow him up so Irving's does not get into the secondary. And now Irving's brought down behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of one. Yeah, and there's, there's Michael Brooks again. Remember I said you'd see him behind the line of scrimmage more than once today? Well, there's, there's the second time, and I'm willing to contend that you'll see him a third time and maybe even a fourth or a fifth. A bold prediction. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's that bold if you consider the, <laughs> consider the player. He has had a fantastic season for the Giants and for Dan Reeves. And when you bring up Michael Brooks's name, Dan Reeves gets a big smile yeah, on his, his face. His face lights up. There's the day for Ricky Irvins. Third down and four for the Redskins. Schuler throws to Ellard. And the longest completion of the day, a first down for Washington, and that has to feel good for young Heath Schuler. Well, it does, because not only is it a completion, but he completes it downfield, and he gets the ball in the hands of Ellard. And, of course, the Giants remember the damage that Ellard did the last time that they faced, they faced the Redskins this season. Ten catches for 197 yards. That's the best performance by a receiver in the NFL this season. Ellard's been bothered by a banged-up knee. In fact, last week at Dallas did not catch a ball the first time that's happened this season yeah and the first time though the Cowboys had the double team on Ellard the whole game by action pass and Schuler sees it drop by they, Cedric Smith they, they got to stop throwing the football to Cedric Smith because that's the third time the ball's been right in his hands and he's dropped it I mean heck I wouldn't be catching it either out there it's cold it's wet He's got the gloves on, so he can't probably barely feel it, and those gloves get all wet. That does They don't help you out at all when they're as wet as they are today. They hit that ball. It's real slick. So you might as well just stop throwing it to him because you're not getting anything on it. With the incompletion, second and ten. of only two and that will leave Schuler and the Redskins with a third and long. Well that's that play action that they've been running the pass off of and this time Norv Turner just says well, I'll mix it up a little bit to keep the Giants defense honest so when he Schuler fakes that handoff again the Giants really won't know if it's the fake or if it's the give because that time it was the give. That's the only way you can make a fake work. You gotta, you gotta have the give every once in a while. Now third and long. Three and eight. Three and eight. Schumer forced to pass over the middle. Irvin's off his hands, off his pads, and it drops incomplete. Booty went after it to try for his second interception of the day, but he couldn't get there in time for the Redskins to punt. Well, Irvin's has got to get more separation from the line of scrimmage for this play to work because you see it here. He's got to get more upfield, and I know Jesse Armstead's closing in on him, but you can't go for that ball just over the other side of the line of scrimmage. You got to let the quarterback have some distance between you, the running back receiver, and that offensive line. David Meggett back for the Giants. Reggie Roby. 
Beautiful punt. Make it from his 10. Knocked out of bounds at the 20. And that's where the Giants will take over. A 55 yard punt from the NFL's best, Reggie Roby, and an eight yard return. You know, from Joe. Megan. I'm sorry. You know, Joe, a lot of people say that Jim Lachey had lost something. He had his knee reconstructed last season. Well, it really is just not true. Watch him here. Hits the linebacker coming inside Buckley, then comes back outside, puts the clamps on Howard. I mean, he's doing double duty on that play, and that's vintage Jim Lachey. Heck, he hasn't lost a step. A late flag was thrown. They, heck, they had already spotted the football, and now a late flag. Here's the call. Ineligible lineman downfield, number 56 on a kicking team will replay fourth down. So Roby will have to re-kick. They had already gone down to the other end, spotted the football, and then somebody remembered that there was a yellow flag somewhere <laughs> on the field. Well, I said when they put two down, they have to have a little bit of a conference, but heck, when they just throw one down, they ought to be able to make the decision a little quicker. So Roby, who had a beautiful punt, his first try, will get another chance. Reggie Roby, long time with the Dolphins. And there's David Meggett. So both Roby and Meggett get another chance. Good snap. Roby, poor kick this time. It takes a Redskins bounce, but this time it's down at the 37. You, know, you can credit that poor kick to Tito Wooten because on the first kick, Wooten was coming and Reggie just barely got it off. This time, Wooten came again, almost got free, and this time because of the first kick, Reggie Roby had his eyes on number 29. And when you've got your eyes on 29, you're not going to get that big booming kickoff. Only a 33-yard punt from Reggie Roby. And when the game is sloppy like this and the field is going to be shortened by by an exchange like that it's it's a big deal for the Giants. The Giants have the football and the lead 4 11 left in the first half. And illegal procedure you would think as there was action on the line of scrimmage. Riesenberg may have been a little anxious. Yeah, and the thing that makes you think even more is when you see Tony Woods walking back from the line of scrimmage clapping his hands. False start. Number 72 offense prior to the snap. Five yards. It's the first down. Heck, you know when you're a defensive lineman if that guy across from you is the guy who got the flag. You, you don't clap your hands. If, if Even if it's close, you don't clap your hands. Then you're looking around worried if it's going to be on you. So that'll bring up a first and 15. And Brown to put it up. He hits the H-back, Aaron Pierce. And a nice pickup of six for the Giants on first and 15. There's big Jumbo Elliott. Part of the guard to try to help protect Dave Brown. You know, Big Jumbo, he's a little bit beat up this year, too. You know, people talk about Lachey and his reconstructed knee, but, of course, Jumbo had the back and ankle and shoulder. He's, he's all banked up in there. On second down and nine, good defense by the safety, Bayless. Knocked it down with Callaway, the intended receiver. Well, if Dave Brown's going to throw that play with Bayless on the underneath coverage, underneath Callaway, he's got to throw a burner. And it's tough to throw a burner when the ball is as slick and as wet as it is today. And you see it here. He lets Bayless has Bayless has the time to get in between Callaway and the ball. Dave Brown, three out of six for only 23 yards. Third and nine. And there'll be flags as. Sterling Palmer came charging into the Giants backfield. We'll see if he was drawn off. Well, it probably could be Palmer because you see him here. He's, he's not clapping his hands or anything, Joe. He's looking around. 
Offside. 97 defense. Unabated to the quarterback. Five yards. Still third down. I knew it. You see that? He's not clapping. He's hanging his head a little bit, too. That was even more of an indication. <laughs> you know, you, that's exactly what you do when you know you're offside. You hang your head a little bit and kind of look out of the corner of your eye. Wait for the call. Try to hide. Yeah, you'd love to hide, but there's no place to go when you're that big. That'll make it third and four. Brown hangs in and throws it incomplete. Nearly picked off by the Redskins. Brown was just completely off cue on that and the only thing you can think of is that he thought Callaway was going to break in and Callaway broke out. Tom Carter nearly came away with the football. Mike Horan back to punt it away for the Giants. We'll give you another look. Yeah you look at Callaway here at the top of the screen. He starts to come in and then look he breaks back out. He's wide open. So Brown thought he was just going to keep going inside. If he waited just a second, throwing it outside, the Giants have got a first down. Instead, it's fourth down and time for Haran to punt it away. Ryan Mitchell back deep. From just outside his own 15. And brought down as he crossed the 30 by Marcus Buckley. Well, next week, the drive for the playoffs begins at 1 o'clock Eastern. It's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. First, the Dallas Cowboys take on the Eagles in a battle between the top two teams in the NFC East. The action then continues at 4 o'clock Eastern. The New York Giants face the Cleveland Browns. Check local listings for the game and time in your area right here on Fox Sports. The Redskins have it trailing 7-6. Trying to set up a screen, a flag on the play as they get it to Mitchell. Corey Miller there to bring him down, but a marker on the play. What do you got? And this is going to cost Washington. These officials have been busy this afternoon. Well, I don't know who it's on or who it's against, but Michael Brooks came racing up through there. And if the Redskins didn't stop him, he was all over Heath Shuler. Top block, number 32. Offense, 15 yards, previous spot, still first down. Still first down, but a personal foul. Well, you're going to see Irvin's, and he puts the chop on Brooks. Look at Brooks coming up through there like a freight train. And Irvin's just comes too low, chops him, gets him in the back of the legs. But if he doesn't do it, he Schuler's buried about a, a, I don't know, six, eight inches into that mud out there. You might be able to get a foot under this mud with the way the turf is today. <laughs> That'll make it first and 25 after the 15-yard penalty. Ricky Irvins gets it back to the 20. That's it, only a four-yard pickup. And some of the Redskin fans getting a little anxious as they want to see the ball sail through the air. North Turner, however... Well, he can at the moment at least to keep it on the ground. That's right. When you see that, you know that Norv Turner, he, right now, he's just playing for field position. He's not going for the first down. Now, watch, he'll come out and throw a pass on this play. But if he runs it, then you know he's just going for the field position, trying to get the Giants back out of there and go into halftime only one point down. Schuler will put it up. He dumps it off and incomplete. Again, it's Ricky Irvins, and the back's coming out of the backfield. Have had about zero success trying to pull in passes from Heath Schuler. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That they they have not caught the ball coming out of the backfield. And once again, Irvins has got to get a little bit more distance between himself and the line of scrimmage. I think that would allow Heath Schuler to put a little bit more of a touch on the ball because when the ball's wet and slick like that, you got to float it a little bit. You got to let the receiver, the running back, pull it down out of the air. You can't just whip it right at him and expect him to catch it. Schuler's had a rough first half, two out of ten for only 16 yards. Third and 22, and they are going for field position. Irvins gets it across the 20. He picked up three. The crowd booing, but you're exactly right. They want to win the battle of field position as we try to close out the first half, and you've got the 
best punter in the NFL walking out to do his thing. Yeah, you know, did you ever wonder why Reggie Roby is the best punter in the NFL? Had no idea. Well, just, I, I've never really thought about <laughs> it. After the game, go down on the field, stand next to the guy. The guy is the size of an offensive guard. I mean, he's, he's like a lineman, and I guarantee you when he was a kid, somebody got a hold of him, his mom or his dad, and said, hey, you know, go ahead and kick the ball because that's a heck of a life. You get up there into the NFL, you kick the ball, you hang around for, for a lot of years. You never get hit too hard. Heck, you don't even get your hair mussed up. Now he's getting a little wet today, but that's no big deal. He can go back and put a coat on. <laughs> yeah, stay warm on the sideline. 6'2", 258. We'll give you a look at the NFC Central today. Minnesota loses to Tampa Bay 20-17. to Their record now 7-5, and and that is a tight division. Chicago 7 and 4 leading Arizona Green Bay lost to Dallas on Thanksgiving Detroit defeated Buffalo on Thanksgiving and now you've got a tight NFC Central yeah, that that's that's why it's the black and blue division you know that happens almost every year Joe those central division teams are all in there battling for a playoff berth and things are going to you know you're going to see some some smashing and some bashing in those games in the last half of the season. Six two two fifty eight. And Reggie Roby takes the snap. Another poor punt. Decent Redskin bounce, and it's down around the thirty two yard line. Well, he saw Tito Wooten coming at him again, and Wooten's going to harangue Reggie Roby all day if he keeps coming around the corner like that, and he's going to affect this game because, as you said, and as I said, now North Turner's playing field position, and when it's sloppy, that's what you do. You use your punter as a weapon, and if you got Tito Wooten, you use him as a weapon to shorten the punter's kick. A 44-yard punt after the roll, and the Giants have the football with 2:05 remaining in the first half, and only one timeout remaining. They spent a timeout just prior to that last Reggie Roby punt. Down Brown is hammered as he gets rid of it. Arthur Marshall, a diving grab at the 35 yard line of Washington. <laughs> you need a groundskeeper to help Marshall get back ready to play again. He took part of the 39 yard line with him. Watch the throw by Dave Graham and then Dave Brown, and then watch the smack he takes from Sterling Palmer. Perfectly placed ball, though, and Marshall comes down with it. Here's the front end. Brown was hammered, but he'll take it. On Monday night in Houston, Dave Brown took a vicious hit from Lamar Lathan. Left the game with a concussion. Here's what happened just moments ago on a 34-yard pass completion to Arthur Marshall. Not too different as he took the big hit from Sterling Palmer. You know, the difference was on this one, it was below the chin. He got the shot in the ribs, and he didn't his head hit the grass instead of that hard artificial turf. Now on first down. Brown hangs in again. Wide open Callaway. Touchdown Giants. The Giants add to their lead. What a beautiful throw from Dave Brown. And nothing could be better for Dave Brown than to complete a long ball like that to Chris Calloway. Nothing could be better for his confidence and the confidence of his teammates and his coaches in him as the guy to lead this Giants offense. Now Treadwell on to tack on the extra points. Giants leading 13 to 6. The Giants leading 14 to 6. A two play drive covering 68 yards and only 13 seconds. Two 34 yard passes capped on this beauty to Chris Callaway. Well, Callaway just burns both the Redskins defenders. And Tom Carter 
Tom Carter just jumps on him and he gets the distance. Now watch Dave Brown here. He's so happy. <laughs> Heck, he wants to high five the ref. He thinks everybody's on his on his side. He think he, the whole world wants to congratulate him, but the ref doesn't seem like he cares that much. And Dave Brown's used to that, though. You know, he, he told us yesterday that even the, the criticism that he gets in the media is not the, the reflection of the real Giants fans. He says he goes out to do his grocery shopping or he goes out to have a cup of coffee at the diner and everybody's telling him, hey, congratulations, and we're behind you. And so he's used to it. So <laughs> he wants the official. He thinks the official's in on the action, too. You don't see that every day. No, you don't see. You don't you usually just ignore those guys and walk by them. Dave Brown pumped up after the touchdown. Tom White wanted nothing to do with it. Now Brian Mitchell back to receive the kick from Brad Del Wieso. Short kick. The rain picks up in intensity taken by Tyrone Rush. Big hits and Rush brought down at the 30. Coming up on the Dockers halftime James and Terry will have all the scores and highlights from around the NFL. It's all coming up next on the Dockers halftime. So with a minute 48 remaining in the half the Redskins have the ball down eight and they have two timeouts remaining. Interesting score with the Rams leading at San Diego 14 to three. I mean this this is an unbelievable year in the NFL from week to week. You have no idea what team will end up on top. Schuler fires and he finds Desmond Howard. John Booty was trying to call timeout just prior to the snap and Desmond Howard comes away with a 27 yard pass completion from Schuler. Well you knew there was some confusion because you're right Booty's trying to call the timeout. What happens is Booty gets stuck in center field. He's trying to call a timeout. He's playing in the center and the rest of the defense is playing cover two with two deep. Now Eller inside the 20. And Schuler answering Dave Brown. And that's what you want to do. I mean, just keep rolling with the Redskins. You caught, you caught the Giants with their with their pants down on the last play, and now you just want to keep going. That paints a rather graphic picture. Timeout called for by the Skins. They're moving in. The defensive coordinator, Mike Nolan, we got a shot of him earlier up the press level. He either heard too much from the press, he was getting tired of hearing from the press, or he just wanted to get down on the field and get a little closer look at the defense. Well, what happens is those coordinators who are sitting up there in the box, when they think their work is done for the half, they come down and get down on the field. So he thought that his work for the half was over, but obviously it's not. The Giants were caught in the transition. Now on first down, Schuler play action. They go right back to the air. Complete good coverage with Henry Eller, the intended receiver. Well, you know, when you got the Giants on the run, or you got any team on the run, and you have the two big pass plays, I think as the Redskins, you want to just keep going because you got them off balance, you got them shaking. Heck, don't call a timeout. I know Schuler's young and inexperienced, but that's where if you have an experienced quarterback, boy, he just lines them up and just goes right at him again. You don't call a timeout and let the Giants regroup. Now second and ten. Off the hands of Desmond Howard. Lee Schuler put too much heat on that ball, and I know Desmond Howard has had some a dis disappointing season and is not doing what the Redskins brought him here to do. But that's a ball where Desmond Howard's wide open, and if Heath Schuler just takes a little bit off it, remember, I mean, the ball is wet and slick, so it's hard for everybody to catch out there today. Schuler, four out of 14 for 69 yards, one interception. And he's faced with a third and 10. Another quarterback draw. A pickup of five, and that'll bring up a fourth down, and Schuler's mixing it up. Did you hear the hits? When the, I mean, 
a quarterback draw is like is like throwing a, a, a hunk of meat out into a bunch of sharks. They're just going to come swarming at you, and they're really going to try to rip you apart. And that's what happened to Schuler on that. He runs too many of those. He's going to get carried off the field. Chip Lowmiller, two for two today. Good from 43 and 29. And again, he tries a 29-yarder. John Freeze, one of the three quarterbacks for the Redskins, is the holder, and he'll call a timeout. 24 seconds remaining in the half, and the play clock was winding down, and the Redskins spend their final timeout here in the first half. Give you a look at the NFC East. Down at the bottom, the Giants 4 and 7. Washington bringing up the rear at 2 and 9. On top, Dallas. They won on Thanksgiving Day. Philadelphia lost to Atlanta 28 to 21. And Arizona, as we showed you earlier, trailing Chicago 10 to 3. So Philadelphia loses in Atlanta. When's the last time you saw these two clubs at the bottom of the pack? It has been a while. So after the timeout, Chip Lowmiller back onto the field and ready to try a 29 yard field goal attempt. Lowmiller has been the finalizer on these drives for the Redskins in the first half. He's two for two, trying to make it three out of three and trying to make it a five point game. The ball will be spotted at the 19. Three for three. A rain soaked day, cold, it's damp, not much offense. And a 14 to 9 score, 21 seconds left in the half. It's been that kind of day. The last play, Heath Schuler will give you the sounds of a quarterback draw in the NFL. I mean, a monster hit coming up from the secondary. And Tim Green, I get the feeling you don't like that play. <laughs> I like it as a player. You love it as a defensive guy. You love to see that guy scrambling around out there in the middle of the field because you can take a shot at him. And you always love to take a shot at a quarterback, especially on a rainy, muddy day like this. Because, you know, the quarterback usually has the clean, besides the punter and the kicker, of course, quarterback's usually got the cleanest jersey out there on the field. If you get a chance to rub him in the mud a little bit, get a little grass on his helmet, you love to take that opportunity. Chip Lowmiller squibs a kick. Arthur Marshall from inside is 20. Decent return after the squib kick across the 30, down shy of the 35, and brought down by Tyrone Stowe. When Torres and Williams were growing up, they used to break the law. Now they are the law. They're the hippest cops on television, working the toughest beat in the nation. Get ready for the ride of your life. Catch New York Undercover Thursday at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, right here on Fox. 15 seconds left in the first half, and the Giants will sit on the halftime lead. Well, we talked. Will take an e. well, we talked about these two teams running the ball, and that's what we've seen. We've seen them start out running the ball, but then as this game has progressed, you see the difference in the in the ball game has been the the long passes and Dave Brown completing the long pass, and Heath Schuler completing two long ones to get the field goal going into halftime. One of the long passes that Tim talks about, a long pass to Chris Callaway. That's the end of the first half with our score. The Giants 14, the Redskins 9. The Dockers halftime coming up. We get ready to begin the second half here at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. with the Giants out in front. 14 to 9 in time for our first half highlights brought to you by MCI. Proof positive. Dave Brown took it in on the roll, his second rushing touchdown of the year. Yeah, he runs it in on this play, and not only does he run it in, then right before the half, you're going to see the next play where he throws it in. He throws it there, but that's not the throw. <laughs> 
Now here you see him go to the long ball and go to his favorite target, Chris Callaway. Callaway burns the Redskins defenders, gets himself wide open in the end zone, and then Brown really delivers the ball on the money. That's an important pass for Dave Brown. And then there, he wants some congratulations from the official. I, you know what? That official might have given him a little bit of a congratulations on that. I didn't see that before. But I didn't I'm, see that either. He, he kind of gave it he, back to he him. He kind of out of the side of his mouth. So I, he he might have said good job or just good anyway. You know what's interesting, though, Tim? You come into a game like this, and, and it's a sloppy field. It's, a, it's an awkward day, I'm sure, for any quarterback. And here's a guy like Dave Brown who struggled this season to get his feet underneath him as the quarterback, and he is doing the job today. He, he really is. And he's not only battling the Redskins today. Dave Brown is battling the hook. And he knows that Dan Reeves is standing on the sideline with the hook in his pocket, and he's ready to take that hook out whenever Dave Brown messes up. Because, And the reason he knows the hook is right there and ready to be used is because he split time all week with Kent Graham in practice. And when you're a quarterback in the NFL and you split the plays 50-50 in practice, you know that the hook is part of the equation on Sunday. And Dave Brown really was a little frustrated with regard to that practicing situation he said you know at the most the backup quarterback will get 30 snaps during a practice instead it's 50 50 split right down the middle but Dave Brown has had a strong day today and on the other side Heath Schuler started out slow he did have a good spurt right at the end of the first half it's going to be interesting to see how he comes out here in the second half yeah he did he get it got it going a little bit more but when you talk about Dave Brown and you talk about that 50 50 split what that means is that on the, in the game today, he has to run plays that he has not run in practice during the week. He has to run some plays that he has only watched Kent Graham run in practice. And that's a hard thing for a quarterback to do because more than anything, mechanics is part of that position. And you can study and you can read the playbook and watch film all you want, but there's no substitute for actually going out there, running the play, making the handoff, doing the footwork, knowing the timing not only of yourself, but the timing of the receivers. Both teams were very late getting back onto the field to start this second half. Not all that anxious to get back out here, trying to stay in the warmth of the dressing room as long as they could. A short kick taken by Kozlowski. And good field position for the Giants as they have it up around their own 38-yard line. We'll give you a look at the halftime statistics and look at the rushing yards. Yeah, when you see that number right there, the big running yards for the Redskins, you'd really expect the Redskins to be out in front. They had the run game. They controlled the clock down here. I think the big difference, though, is the one turnover to no turnovers for the Giants. You go through a day like we have here this afternoon and you don't turn the ball over, you stand a good chance of winning the game. Good point. 14 to 9 as we start the second half with the Giants out in front. Rodney Hampton alone set back behind Brown and the lend around to Callaway. Good blocking. He has a wall in front of him. He has a first down and he's into Redskin territory. That's a tough play to run on this kind of a field, Joe, when it's sloppy and everything like that. But, you know, it's the perfect play for this time because all those Redskins defenders have been sitting around at halftime, sitting around their locker, and you get stiff and you get sore and you're cold, you're chilled when you come out. So this is a perfect kind of play to run if you can overcome that wet footing. Pick up of 12 and a first down for the Giants. Hampton will try the other side. Behind the blocking of Elliott and Roberts, Hampton picked up a couple. Well, that's been the pattern for the New York Giants. They like to run, and they like to run it right behind Big Jumbo and right behind Big William Roberts. Hampton has had a decent day. He has not broken off one of the long runs that gets those totals up to eye-popping figures, but plenty of time left. Second down and eight after Hampton picked up two. In the tight end cross. And after the juggling act, he's down inside the Redskin 20. We talked about Dave Brown and building his confidence, and 
making Dan Reeves put that hook in, back in the case and take it out of his pocket. Here's another example of his fine work today. And this is a nice pass right down the seam. And Howard Cross just splits the linebacker and splits the defensive back, gets right into the hole, and then Brown delivers it perfectly with the touch. Pickup of 29 yards and a first down inside the Redskin 20. Hampton plays a big hit on Govea, picked up five. Boy, he turned Kurt Govea around. <laughs> what is it that sets Rodney Hampton apart? Those big thighs? Yeah, well, you just said it. He, he turned Govea around. He's, he's 5'11, 230 pounds, and he runs fast. So he gets himself accelerating and he's perfectly willing to lower his head, lower his shoulder and just knock people down. Second down and five. Hampton again. This time he's turned back. Leonard Marshall was there for the Redskins. Leonard Marshall who had such a fantastic career with the Giants part of that good defense with of course Lawrence Taylor those two used to work stunts that I'm sure had offensive players spinning and you know whenever you play your old team you play an ins especially inspired game so you can guarantee that Leonard Marshall is fired up for this one. up a first down Shit. and someone not too happy down there <laughs> well Dan Reeves knows that everybody in New York including himself wants to see David Meggett into the ground game into the mix but you got to use Meggett as a change up to Rodney Hampton and you see when you put him in there and use him as a change up He's real effective, but he doesn't have the size or the durability of a Rodney Hampton, so you don't want to put him in there and just have him barrel away all day up the middle. Redskins, every time Megan touches the ball, also worried about that halfback pass. Hampton hit in the backfield and dropped by Tyrone Stowe. He just did get back to the line of scrimmage. That's one way to defend the running game is get those defensive linemen upfield. And you see him right up there into the backfield. Watch the balance of Rodney Hampton. Tim Johnson gets his hands around his waist and he keeps spinning. And if Johnson doesn't hang on, Hampton can keep going. That, that's a nice display of balance. He didn't, he didn't make it happen on that play, but to take that initial hit and then just spin and keep going is, is a nice sign of a big back. Goal from the six. Fake toss. Touchdown. Mike Sherrard. No high five from the ref this time, but it's still six points for Dave Brown and the Giants. And that's the way you, you make your receiver when he's disgruntled. You make him happy. You throw him the ball right down there in the end zone. And that was a nicely executed play. But you talk about Dave Brown only executing half the plays I guarantee this is one play that he ran in practice this week because he ran it picture perfect he spun around the fake handoff and then just delivered the ball to Sherrard on the money they've done that before Treadwell on to tack on the extra points and the confidence of Dave Brown is growing by the minute here at RFK he gets it to Mike Sherrard and over on the sideline, Sherrard probably said, hey, Dave, thanks. Those burritos and nachos cross the border. And by Canon cameras, so advanced they're simple. Brad Del Weso kicks it away. Ryan Mitchell on the return for Washington. Trying to string it out, and he's brought down by Tito Woot. Take you back to the touchdown to Sherrard. Well, Mike Sherrard, if anything, he loves a play, he loves a slant pattern. He told us yesterday it's his favorite thing, and this is what he scores on right here. He lines up on the outside, he slants towards the inside, he gets just a step on Daryl Green, and then Dave Brown does a perfect job. You see the timing of that play? Brown just lays it up perfectly. 
And then he gets a little congratulations on the sideline. And he probably wants to know if Dan Reeves has put that hook away. First down for the Redskins. Schuler to put it up, trying to answer Desmond Howard. 15 yard completion and a first down. And do you get to the point, Tim, where. Yeah, you like to run the ball, but this is a Redskin team that's two and nine. You've got to find out about Heath Schuler. What the heck? Put the ball in the air. Oh well, yeah, and, that, and and you're down this far. You're you're absolutely right, Joe. And the, and the short pass that they wanted to do was not working because the running backs were dropping the ball. Well, the receivers have hung on to it better today, so they'll probably just keep going downfield. Another play action pass, and again downfield, and again it's Desmond Howard. But a flag on the play as Heath Schuler has opened up the second half, two for two, with a 15 yard and a 16 yard completion. And that will stand. Well, Heath Schuler trying to answer Dave Brown and put the Redskins right back in it. Well, Heath Schuler likes to throw this Holy long ball. Number 57 defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Corey Miller on the hold you take a look at him right here and he's lined up across from the tight end you see him there he gets the shot here he had it he had it the whole way there he had the jersey of Ethan Horton and the ref when the ref sees that jersey stretched out the next thing that happens is the flag gets dropped on first down another pass wide open is Eller and brought down at the 25 and Schuler starts the second half three for three time for a McDonald's game break we'll check in on the Chargers check in with James Brown all right Joe the Rams were up by eight and a third but here's why they are the second worst punt coverage team in the league Darian Gordon will cover 75 yards on his punt return that brings the Chargers within two then Stan Humphreys hands off to Ronnie Harmon he finds pay dirt and we're all tied at 14 back to DC Joe Buck and Tim Green Thank you James Brown that was confidence in a running game here the Redskins have picked up confidence in their passing game and again Schuler to put it up you get the feeling that may have slipped that slipped or oh, it was, was either tipped. slipped or tipped I think I think big number number 93 Mike Fox might have got his hand on it let's take a look and see exactly what happened you see him battling in there and we saw him before getting his hands up He's got McKenzie on him. Yep, he gets his hand up and tips the ball. So that's a pass defended for Michael Fox. And then you saw Schuler turn around to the bench and explain it was tipped. So he's conscious of the first half he had and wants to continue to stay hot. Three out of four in the second half, and they're going to put it up again. Schuler guns it, incomplete, and not a wise throw. John Booty was all over Desmond Howard. This is the kind of game that you expect Mike Fox to, to be in there tipping the ball and he had his hands up there again. And you know what we see now Joe is that the Redskins have completely changed their game plan. They've abandoned the run. They have said hey let's forget about the short passes. They're not working and they're going deep. Third and ten facing Norv Turner and the Redskins. Redskins today two out of eight on third down and the Giants make wholesale changes on their defense. Schuler sacked. Eric Howard there for the Giants. Five and a half sacks for Howard, and that will stop the Redskin drive. That's a big play right there. And heck, you, you gotta love it when a guy like Howard gets it. Schuler starts to throw it, and then when he steps up, Howard's right there, and he just hangs on. And if he doesn't hang on, heck, Schuler, he, he's comfortable running up in there with all those quarterback draws. First sack of the day for the Giants, and now Chip Lowmiller on to try a 47-yard field goal. He's three for three. Lowmiller is four for four. Officially a 46-yard field goal. Lowmiller, four out of four. 
on a rain soaked RFK Stadium field. He takes some turf, he adds three points. Well, the last time these two teams played simultaneously for the bottom of the NFC East, it's been a while. And we'll give you a graphic look at it after the kick by Low Miller. Short kick taken by Marshall from his own 20. And brought down as he crossed the 35. And the two teams wrestle for the football. You talked about the turnover earlier. Nothing gets a team more pumped up like the Redskins if you're trying to come from behind than a fumble on a kickoff or an interception. It still belongs to the New York Giants as Marshall could hold on. New York's ball. First down. Well, simultaneously, the last time these two teams had losing records, 1964. The Redskins 6 and 8, the Giants 2 10 and 2 and the last time these two teams were playing for a basement finish 1947 this is 1994 <laughs> I do it has been a while on first down the toss to Hampton and he is met by Martin Bayless and Ken Harvey you know as you get a look at Rodney Hampton his uniform appears a little cleaner he may have switched at the half I think he might have watched Ken Harvey here at the bottom of the screen he plays off Kenyon Rashid comes up comes underneath him and makes the tackle so Ken Harvey showing not only that he I mean he's the sack leader in the NFL but he shows he can play the run too. Hampton 16 carries for 50 yards Brown sets up a screen Rodney. First down for the Giants. He broke tackles all over the place and finds a first down as he picked up 11. Yeah, and one of the tackles he broke was Andre Collins, number 55 for the Redskins. He's had a tough season, Joe. I mean, he's the leading tackler, but in key situations, he's missed tackles. He missed one against Emmett Smith last week, and Smith went for a touchdown, and there you see him missing Hampton right here. I mean, he just overruns it. And then Hampton, again, shows that great balance for a big man. Collins will sit this play out. On first down, Hampton. Brought down by Daryl Green off the corner for the Washington Redskins. I threw it out there as, as we look at Rodney Hampton. This guy Rodney Hampton is having a strong day. Yeah he really is and you said he changed his jersey at the halftime and you're right you see him here. Well he grabs on to Pierce and just says pull me along buddy. But the reason why he changed his jersey at halftime is because it gets all wet and it gets heavy and he doesn't want any extra poundage at all. Second down and eight. Brown fires incomplete with Howard Cross the intended receiver Tyrone Stowe there defensively for the Redskins. So that'll leave the Giants with a third and eight. You don't usually see guys changing their jerseys at halftime Joe because it's so wet and and it starts to cool down and it's cold and it's uncomfortable. And, you know it's, it's kind of yucky for a better word and you don't want to take it off and put a new one on. But if it's going to improve your game like it will for Rodney Hampton by lightening the load then you do it. Two out of six on third down. And on third and eight, Brown throws incomplete. Callaway, the intended receiver, and Brown was dropped after he got rid of that pass. Sterling Palmer was there to put the pressure on Dave Brown, and it's time for the Giants to punt. Yeah, and part of the reason, you're right, Sterling Palmer, you look at him right here, he's working on Doug Riesenberg and just exemplifies a little bit of the problems that Riesenberg's had all season of guys coming around that corner and getting heat on the quarterback. Moran back to punt his fourth of the day with Brian Mitchell deep for the Redskins. High hanging punt. Mitchell lets it go over his head and that's why he's one of the best 
Sails into the end zone. A 50-yard punt. But the Redskins will have it at the 20. They trail by nine. Well, the New York Giants had to punt it back to Washington. The Redskins down by nine. They take over. Time of possession about even. And the Washington Redskins take over with the ball at their own 20. Keith Schuler started out the second half hot, and they go right back to the air. Schuler steps up. Ooh, what a hit. Michael Brooks just met a first-round draft pick up close. Well, they put the heat on. They sent Corey Widmer, the middle linebacker, right up the gut on that play. The Redskins did a nice job of picking it up, opening a lane. But boy, Michael Brooks was just sitting there, hanging, laying in wait. Look at Brooks right here in the middle. He's hanging out there. Now Schuler comes, man. That's a, that's a face you don't want to see coming at you. Michael Brooks, that is. <laughs> a gain on the play for Schuler. He picked up one, and that'll bring up second and nine. side and the Redskins will be left with a third and five you know it's surprising Joe that we haven't seen more fumbles you talked about turnovers earlier we've only had one turnover so far this game and it wasn't even a fumble it was an interception you see the handoff here and that's picture perfect I mean Schuler just puts it right in the bread basket and Irvin's just keeps going with it and hangs on. So nice job by both teams, both runners, of hanging on to that wet ball today. We also have not seen any bad exchanges between the center and the quarterback. Third down and five. Wide open as Winans and a first down. Titus Winans. 13 yard completion and the drive is alive for Washington. Well, believe me, Heath Schuler loves this throwing the ball downfield bit. He he has to force himself, he said before the game, I have to force myself to throw the underneath pass because I want to go downfield. And here you see him going downfield once again. And Randolph just leaves his he just leaves Wyman wide open. Felipe Sparks has re-injured his groin. He is not in the secondary for the Giants. Wide open is Ellard. And complete down to the 40, and we're getting a good look. We are getting a good look at the number one pick, Schuler and just how talented he is. Well, you mentioned Felipe Sparks being out of the game, and this is exactly what you want to do as the Redskins. If you've got Henry Ellard and Felipe is out, you go right at Corey Raymond, and that's what they're doing here, and you're going to see more and more of it. Rudolph Coleman gets a little bit of a heat, a little bit of heat on Schuler, but it's it's too little, too late. And a 22-yard pickup. Schuler now nine of 21 for 156 yards. Nearly picked off, and there's Corey Raymond. There's Corey Raymond, and there's Henry Ellard. We're just going to keep going back to that well. An incomplete pass, and Raymond almost came away with an interception. Yeah, he does because Heath Schuler delivers this ball a little bit too short. Puts it right in there, right into the turf. There's no way Henry Ellard could have caught that ball. Second down and 10. Delayed handoff. Ricky Irvin. A couple of well earned yards. He picked up only two. And it'll bring up a third down and eight. Michael Brooks there for the tackle for the Giants. And you talked about. We talked about the exchanges, and you said the center handoff. That's how they keep the ball dry right there. If he turns, we'll get a little look at it. You see that? Those balls are wrapped up there nice and snug like a, like a baby. Those are fourth quarter balls right there. They keep those things nice and dry under the towel. Third and eight. Schuler throws and incomplete. Titus Winans, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up a fourth down. 
Now the Redskins are in that in-between territory. Do they go for it? Do they try a field goal? Do they try to punt? And they're going to bring on Reggie Roby and the punting unit. And North Turner hears some boos out of the crowd here at RFK. Reggie Roby is fourth of the day. We talked about this being a game of field position in the slop and in the mud. But Dave Brown really has changed the whole equation because he's been completing the deep balls, and so is Heath Schuler. Roby gets rid of it. And it's down to downfield, just outside the 10 by Johnny Thomas. That's where the Giants will set up. They have the ball and the lead. Another change at cornerback, this time for Washington. Felipe Sparks is out for the Giants. Now Tom Carter, player out of Notre Dame, the number one pick from last season, checks out. Whether that's due to injury or performance, who knows? Daryl Boykin checks in for the Redskins. down to give us to Hampton and he is wrestled down by Tim Johnson you see Tim Johnson again he remember he said this is my type of game I know they're running at me I know they got the big bodies on me I'll go big body to big body uh, that will play this game and you see him come right off of William Roberts and just scoop up Rodney Hampton on the line of scrimmage pick up of one so second down and nine to the game finally here in the second half wide open is Aaron Pierce and a first down for the Giants well that'll always take the wind out of the sails of the crowd when it looks like the Giants or looks like the visiting team is going to be pinned down there in their own near their own goal line and then all of a sudden Dave Brown with the confident throw delivers downfield to the tight end or the H back Aaron Pierce gets the first down and all of a sudden the crowd gets real quiet a 15 yard pickup and that will end the third quarter of play here in Washington with a score the Giants 21 the Redskins 12 will return to RFK after these words from your local station welcome back to RFK we start the fourth quarter Joe Buck and Tim Green with you we give you a look at the score and Tim we came into this game talking about the quarterbacks and we'll leave here talking about the quarterbacks. Dave Brown has had a solid day, and the Redskins have opened it up for Heath Schuler. Yeah, I can tell you one thing. I guarantee that Dave Brown will not be splitting snaps in practice this week with Kent Graham. He'll be getting the load of the work. On first down, Rodney Hampton bounces it outside, and he picks up a first down. Wrestled down by Daryl Morrison in a pickup of 11. Well, again, we see the changeup by Rodney Hampton. Instead of just running it up the gut where the turf's getting soft and muddy, he breaks it outside and uses his speed. You watch it here. Watch 54 out on the edge here. Gavea, he gets hooked just enough by Aaron Pierce to give Rodney Hampton the corner. 64 yards today for Hampton. Picked up a first down and the Giants sent Sherrard in motion. Hampton tries the left side, now cuts it back up the middle and finds big yards. A pickup of seven, and that'll bring up a second down and three. And you see the guy out in front of him again is Aaron Pierce. You know, the Giants really like Pierce. He's he's one of those unsung guys, mostly because he's an H-back, and nobody knows really quite what an H-back is, and nobody really talks about it. And you, no kid ever grows up thinking, hey, I want to be an H back in the NFL because, you know, you just don't hear about it. But Aaron Pierce is in there banging away and doing the job for Rodney Hampton. Second down and three. Hampton met in the backfield, spins away from Palmer and picked up three. He was brought down right at the yard marker, and it's going to come down to a measurement. He may be a little short. But Sterling Palmer missed him in the backfield. Camp 
Hampton was brought down a little shy of the first down yardage and now they're going to measure. They had third down on the box but now they're going to call out the chains and make sure they change it to second down and we'll see if they're short it'll be a third and in inches. Leonard Marshall's in, in there making sure he's going to keep those guys honest. They are indeed short. By at least a foot and that's what faces the New York Giants third and about a foot. Always got to keep one guy back and just be there on the officials just to make sure you know because you, you really never know you know you, you don't want to lose a link here or a link there. And so you always send a big guy. It's usually better to have a big guy like Leonard Marshall up there. Keeping his eye on everything. Three tight ends set in the game for the Giants. On third and a foot. Dave Brown finds a first down and he sneaked through a little hole down close to the ground. And we need to hear more about Buddy. Let's go for a McDonald's game break. Here's JB. All right, Joe, and Buddy likes his defense because he gets offense from his defense. Steve Walsh pass knocked in the air by Keith McCants, the big fella. Nifty moves 45 yards to pay dirt, and the Cardinals are now within three of the Bears. 7.36 left in the ball game. Take you back to D.C., Joe Buck and Tim Green. Thank you, James Brown. How about McCants? Yeah, well, that, that's part of Tampa Bay's problem down there. They let somebody go, and then he turns in a big day for another team. Throwing it, and he is met by Tyrone Stowe and thrown down, and now a flag. We've seen Callaway do this before on an end around where he'll fake a pass just to take some of the defenders off him, but then he was wrestled down and might have drawn a penalty. Yeah, and Tyrone Stowe, he, he didn't buy the fake by Callaway, and that Redskin defense is a little more warm after the last one. And now watch Stowe. He grabs and watch him throw the suplex on Callaway. Heck, that looks like professional wrestling, and that's not something you want to do to one of those little guys out there because you know it's going to get called. I mean, you do something like that to Rodney Hampton, and the official figures, hey, you know that you got to get Hampton down any way you can. But you get a little guy like Callaway. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, picking out. Is that a good call? <laughs> well, yeah, because it's unnecessary. Like I said, you get a little guy like Callaway, and you don't have to slam him down there. So that's that's where it comes into the interpretation of being unnecessary. If it's Hampton, it's necessary. If it's Callaway, it's unnecessary. And a first down is the result. Washington has been penalized seven times today. The Giants have drawn only one flag. Hampton doesn't find anything. Leonard Marshall there to meet him, and Shane Collins wrapped him up. Leonard Marshall, we've called his name a few times today. You know, I talked about Aaron Pierce and the life of an H-back. Well, this is why no kid wants to grow up being H-back. You're running around in the back, and then you're trying to wham a big outside linebacker and then he gets through and now Aaron Pierce knows he's going to get in trouble for that one so you know there's not much glory in it but then when you make a mistake you know when the coach runs the film he's going to ream you out for a play like that second down and ten flags all over the place and the ball is completed on the near sideline to Chris Callaway, but there are flags. Callaway working on Tom Carter, who, by the way, is checked back into the game. Ten fifty eight remaining in regulation. And the Washington Redskins will need two scores to catch up to the Giants. And the officials are going to talk it over. Well, one thing about that H back and the wham, if you're the outside linebacker and you, and you see him coming at you, 
Offsides, number 91 defense, five yards, still second down. And that's exactly what it was. Shane Collins saw Aaron Pierce coming at him on that play. And when that whammer's coming at you, you want to get a little momentum of your own. And sometimes that momentum that you get draws you into that neutral zone and draws you off sides. So Collins guilty and that'll bring up a second and five. Time finds Hampton. Rodney a juggle. He picks up yards and finds a first down. Tony Woods there to make the stop. Rodney Hampton has been doing everything. Yeah, he's having a heck of a game. Nice balance on that. You know, look at the breath coming out of these guys' mouths on this. This is the kind of picture you see in your little kid sitting in your living room. And you say, hey, Dad, I'd like to do that when I grow up. I'd like to be one of those guys huffing and puffing and steam coming out of my mouth and getting my hands down in the dirt, playing in the NFL. That's what it's all about. That's what dreams are made of. Plus, you get money to boot. <laughs> you get a lot of money. On first down, Hampton again. Hammered. The middle linebacker, Tyrone Stowe, was there. Tim Johnson was the first to get him. There's Tyrone. And he's Tim. probably still angry from that penalty because, you know, if you're a linebacker in the NFL and you, you put the suplex on a guy, heck, you don't care if it's a receiver. You don't look at numbers. You don't see Cal, this is Callaway, this is Hampton. I can throw him down. I can't. You're just out there. You just want to throw everybody down. You want to you want to hurt everybody. When you're a middle linebacker, that's just your temperament. Now second down and ten. to the flats. Pierce. Forgot the football. Well, there's the H-back getting a chance to catch a ball. Yeah, you know, he finally had a chance for a little bit of glory, but he came up short and dropped the ball. And once again, the coaches are going to be on him about that. Now, watch the, the from now on they'll probably send him in motion and have him run a couple more wham plays and say here take that if you're not going to catch the ball we'll just wham you around all day back to blocking third and ten <laughs> a handoff to Megan David Megan brought down right at the first down marker and I believe he picked up a first down on the far end of the field. Tony Woods there to make the stop. Megat picked up 10. And depending on the spot, this is indeed a first down. Let's take a look at the work of, of Jumbo Elliott. He, he makes the one guy whiff, and then he goes after Collins. He gets into that linebacker there and takes a bite out of him and opens it up for David Megat. The Giants had a four receiver set in the game. They sneak little David Megan in there and he picks up the first down with a 10 yard carry. Now it's back to Hampton. Flags on the play. Hampton brought down by Martin Bayless. One way to stay warm and keep active for these officials is to throw flags all day. <laughs> And this will be a hold on the Giants. It looks like it's on Howard Cross because he's angry about it. Holding number 87 offense, 10 yards from the line of scrimmage to first down. When you're working on Ken Harvey, number 57 here for the for the Redskins, you, you got to get a hold of him every once in a while. That's just part of the game, you know. Though, it, it, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know where he held him on that play, but uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I can't. I'm speechless. You make the call. It costs the Giants 10 and brings up a first and 20. Hampton. Boy, he hits the hole in a blink. A full head of steam when he gets the ball from Dave Brown. He picked up four. And when he comes barreling through there and you're a defender, even if you bring him down, he, he leaves, he takes a little bit out of you. You know, he, he, he's like a body puncher. 
He punches to the body and he wears you down through the game. If you're in there in the interior line, you know you're going to come out with some sore ribs and, and, a, and a sore solar plexus. That's right above your stomach. I was wondering. Yeah. The Giants eating up some major time on the clock over an eight minute drive and they delay to Hampton. Bayless there, as was Tim Johnson, a pickup of three. And it'll bring up a third down for the Giants. Boy, he's had a good day. Big well, Tim Johnson. You see that mud up there on the top of his helmet there? Heck, he does. He's not one of these guys that wants somebody to pick it off. He just says, heck, leave it. Remember, I said earlier in the show, some of the guys just like the mud. But Tim Johnson's one of those guys. He just likes the mud. He's not cold. Third down and 13. Maggot, watch out for that halfback pass. He hangs on to it, and he lost two. Boy, he looked like he was sizing it up, and he has owned the Redskins with that halfback pass. In fact, the last three times he has faced the Redskins, three for three with three touchdowns. Yeah, and North Turner ran this play at his defense every day of the week in practice this week because he knew it was coming. Because, you, I mean, the Giants did it, like you said, three in a row, three touchdowns in a row, and you knew the Giants were going to at least take a crack at it. David Treadwell on to try a 34-yarder. Treadwell is wide to the right. The Redskins hanging in. This field goal, missed field goal, helps. It's the new plateau. Washington, D.C. A cool night on the 27th of November. And the Redskins looking for their third win of the year. Heath Schuler trying to get him there. 21 to 12, the Giants out in front. And on first down, Schuler over the middle. This time, Irvins hangs on. Brought down by Michael Brooks and Irvins on the reception picked up four yards. Well now they're back to that underneath pass but they might as well just throw that underneath pass out the window Joe because Schuler wants to go deep and he's had success going deep. Schuler trying to avoid the sack got rid of it. That'll be an incomplete pass. We need to take you back uh, to that final drive by the Giants Tim at eight up ten minutes and fourteen seconds. And that might almost be as good as points. Here's the missed field goal by Treadwell. You know, a lot of things can go wrong when it's a sloppy field. But if you look at the mechanics here, I mean, you know, Treadwell's foot's there. The hold is there. And, you know, he just flat out misses it. He's missed from 43 yards. He's missed from 34 yards. 0 for 2. Third down and 6. Schuler finds Irvin. And he's brought down short of a first down, but this has got to be two down territory. The Redskins check in their heavy bodies. They bring in their fullback Smith and an extra tight end Jenkins. They're going to have to go for it. As Irvins came up short. Well, now I can see going for the, the shorter or the intermediate pass on that because you do want to get the first down. But boy, if they make the first down and they keep it going, Schuler's got to get the ball downfield. North Turner's got to turn him loose. He's got to let him run. He's got to let, I mean, Schuler's like one of those stallions. You know, he's, he's a purebred. He's a little rough around the edges, and he wants to go long. He wants to run, and North Turner's got to let him run. I mean, this is the time. This will be a fourth down, some indecision. On the part of the players in the field, you can see North Turner yelling, go for it. I mean, you have no choice, and what the heck? You're two and nine. <laughs> well, that's a great point. Two and nine, and you need two scores. So, you know, just just go for it. And like I said, if you get it, turn Schuler loose and see what he can do. So a fourth down facing the Redskins. 67. Pass on 
Fourth and one. Incomplete. Ethan Horton, the intended receiver, and on a day like this, does that shock you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you stretch the field on first down, throw the long ball on first and second down, but fourth and short, and your running game has been working. You know, I think what happened on that play is Corey Miller held Ethan Horton up just enough at the line of scrimmage to mess up the pattern on this. The incomplete pass out of the reach of Horton. The Giants take over. Five years, quality still our recipe. The Giants take over a first down after the Redskins couldn't convert on fourth and short. They hand to Rodney Hampton. Andre Collins there to meet him at the line of scrimmage. Fourth and short, and the Redskins elected to throw the football. Heath Schuler getting pumped up by the veteran Leonard Marshall, the former Giant, trying to keep the rookie's spirits up. Give you a look at the AFC East and what's going on today. Miami came back and defeated the Jets 28 to 24. They're on top of the record of 8 and 4. Buffalo lost to Detroit on Thanksgiving. Indianapolis will play New England a little later on today. For the AFC, you could count 9, 10 teams, maybe even 11 still in playoff contention in the AFC. So it's tough to pick the playoff teams around the NFL at this point in the season. Flags fly on the give to Rodney Hampton. Well, you talk about parity in the league, and that's what everybody's wanted is the parity, and free agency has helped bring that about. This will be a legal motion, a legal procedure on the New York Giants. And they're going to decline the penalty. Illegal motion. Number 80 offense. The penalty is declined. Result of the play, third down. They don't want to give the Giants the extra time of having an extra down, so that will bring up a third and six. And the way David Treadwell's been kicking the ball, Joe, I mean, the Redskins are still in this game. I mean, they're going to have to complete some long balls and stretch the field, but if they stop the Giants here, they got a shot. Ball still alive. Martin Bayless back the other way. This is going to be a touchdown. Sixty-yard fumble return for a touchdown, and Dan Reeves is saying, "What the heck was that?" Well, there's been some criticism, as we said before, of Andre Collins, number 55 for the Redskins. He's missed some tackles. He's missed some plays. But the Giants went to the well one too many times here. You watch Collins 55 right in the middle of the screen. He's not fooled on this one. And then you see the mud and the stuff flying out of Callaway's feet there. So you see the factor of the field being a factor. And then this is the big play that the Redskins need. They're right back in this football game. Well, they're going to be talking about that play. The knee of Callaway, if it wasn't down when that ball popped out, it was close. And Dan Reeves, furious. Low Miller on to tack on the extra point. And all of a sudden, we've got a two point game. The New York Giants have had a rough season. They thought they had this one put away. That is not the case. Simpsons part of a full hour tonight. Well, take a look at Callaway's knee. His knee hits the turf just about the same time that he it, he loses the ball. I mean, really, it's too it's too close to call for me. I, I just throw a coin up in the air and heads heads it's a fumble, tails it's not. The official right there made the call a fumble. You're right, Tim. He started to lose possession right as the knee is coming down it turns into a fumble which leads to a touchdown a 60 yard return by Bayless 
and we'll give you another look. Well, you know what it is? It's one of those things. It's really too close to call. Half the people are going to say you're crazy. It's not a fumble, and the other half are going to say, yeah, it's out of there. I mean, you see the knee down right there, and the ball is out a little bit, but it, it, it's too close to call. That's a 30th of a second, those frames right there that you're looking at on a replay. Regardless, it turns into seven points, and this has turned into a two-point game. Rodney Hampton tries the left side. He picked up five. Andre Collins was the one who made the hit and then must have forced the ball out from behind Callaway. Yeah, got his hand right up in there. Nine tackles today, one forced fumble, and that's put the Redskins right back in it. Now second down, and the toss to Rodney Hampton. Walked down short of a first down. In fact, he got only one. And that'll bring up a third down for the Giants who now are in a scramble to try to hang on and win this game. Hampton 29 carries 90 yards. Well those Redskins defensive players the linemen and the linebackers are fired up right now and when the when it's a muddy sloppy field like this and everybody's cold and wet it, the momentum is is doubly important and the Redskins right now after the big play by Andre Collins and Bayless have the momentum. before the play could get underway Tom White the official stops play that gives us a chance to show you this a third down and four facing the Giants when we return a third down and four facing the Giants well, when it's third and four and the field this messy and wet it might as well be third and ten because really it puts you into a passing situation and if it's a pass going to be the biggest pass of Dave Brown's day today. The Giants are four out of 12 on third down. Megan in the backfield. Marshall in motion. Play action. Big pressure from Palmer. Brown's going to run it. Brown's got a first down. And Dave Brown just for a little exclamation point. Let's just know it's a first down. He's a fiery young quarterback. He is, and that's a huge first down. I said it was a big, a big pass play, and you figured they're going to pass it. Dave Brown had the option, and we've seen him have this option before, and I said earlier in the game, you don't want to run the ball unless you know you're going to get the first down, and believe me, Dave Brown knew he had the first down on this play. Nothing was going to keep him from getting that extra yard. Brown on the ground, five carries, ten yards, and a touchdown. No yards bigger than the last four he just picked up. Hampton on first down. A full head of steam, he picked up five. Tyrone Stowe in the middle of things for the Redskins. And a timeout has been called. At the end of the game, Tim and I will select the Miller Light player of the game. And we have quite <laughs> we have quite a few choices in this game today. Next week, the drive for the playoffs begins at 1 o'clock Eastern. When, except for Boston, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. First, the Cowboys take on the Eagles in a battle between the top two teams in the NFC East. The action continues at 4 Eastern. The New York Giants face the Cleveland Browns. Check local listings for the game and time in your area right here on Fox. A second down and five facing the New York Giants. The Redskins took that last time out and they are left with only one timeout. And obviously the two minute warning which is 15 seconds away on the game clock. in the backfield behind Brown 30 carries 95 yards this afternoon make it 31 carries and another first down for the Giants well, that's what they needed to run this clock out now it goes down to the two minute and then the skins have got one more timeout, so they're going to get one more crack but if the Giants get another first down after this it's all over 
Rodney Hampton 31 carries 102 yards Dave Brown and the Giants trying to hang on in D.C. Right after a full hour of the Simpsons tonight on Fox coming up after this one two minutes left and a first down for the Giants. Hampton. Gets it down to the 45 and the Redskins will spend their final timeout. That one is now a zero. So Washington left with no timeouts a minute 53 remaining here in the fourth quarter. So they still have a, a, a prayer here. They got a little bit of a chance if they can shut the Giants down. Be interesting to see where Hampton run if they give the ball in fact to Hampton on this play where he runs because he got the first down on the last series by cutting it up starting up the middle and then breaking to the outside where the grass is a little better and then he just ran this play and only got three he went right up the gut so we'll have to take a look and see where he goes if he goes for the footing or if he goes for the speed upfield. Folks this game is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the written consent of the Washington Redskins, the National Football League, is strictly prohibited. A minute 53 remaining, and the Giants on the verge of their fifth win of the season. And when we talked to the players, Tim Green, yesterday, they didn't want to come out and say it. They didn't want to overblow it, but they still think they're in the playoff picture. Well, the, the only problem is they got they got Cleveland and they got Philadelphia away, and then they got Dallas at home. So they'd obviously have to win the rest of their games, and that's a tough schedule. On second down, here's Rodney Hampton. And the clock will continue to run as Hampton picked up a yard. And he chose to go straight up the middle where it's sloppy and muddy in there. Or maybe Dan Reeves chose it for him. The Redskins need a stop. The Giants are faced with a third down here, and another first down would end this game. A minute 26 and counting. One play I can guarantee you that they're not going to run is Chris Calloway on the reverse again. <laughs> Pretty good bet there. Third down and six. More first down and this game is over. Rodney Hampton won't get it. A pickup of only one. And that'll bring up a fourth down. And the Giants offense is staying out on the field. Clock running with 48 seconds remaining. On the play clock, 20 seconds. So the Giants aren't going to take a chance with a punt with the snap and the chance to block it the chance to to fumble it the chance for a big return with Brian Mitchell back there they're doing the smart thing just eating up as much of the clock as they possibly can two seconds remaining on the play clock and now the Giants will spend a timeout and we'll tell you that today's game was produced by Mike Burks directed by Joe Assetti. Pre-game show produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. The executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. This is just smart work using the clock by Dan Reeves right here. You know, Joe, he told us yesterday that he was a little disappointed in himself in that Arizona game for not, not making a decision late in the game to take a safety and to kick it out from the 20-yard line instead of punt it from his own goal line. Well, this this time he's he's got his thinking cap on and this is not one decision the way he worked this clock at the end here that he's going to be regretting in the shower after the game. Our Miller Lite player of the game is Dave Brown off the concussion from last Monday night off the benching against the Arizona Cardinals and today he had a solid game under tough conditions. Mike Horan on to punt so they will test the long snap abilities of Greg Bishop. And the foot of Mike Curran, a good exchange, is needed. They get the good snap. The Redskins bring it, but Horan able to get it away. And more importantly, there will be no return by Brian Mitchell. Good execution by the punt team of the Giants. Good snap. 
good punt in that Mitchell, one of the best, doesn't get a chance to return it. And the offense for the Redskins trots on with 10 seconds left and no timeouts. So the Giants, despite that 60 yard fumble returned by Martin Bayless on the part of the Redskins, are going to hang on and win this game. Well, Heath if Schuler will air it out. There's his day. If for nothing else, this is a big game for the Giants in that it separates them from the bottom of the pack. It gets some distance between them and the last place Redskins in their division. Schuler will give it a pump downfield. And it falls incomplete with one tick remaining on the clock. So one more shot for Schuler. Who was able to get the ball? However, there is a penalty flag on the play. That first throw, he was able to get it inside the giant 40, but there's a flag on the play and only one second left. Well, the only way they're going to get a score out of this is one of those old Stanford plays where they start lateral in the ball around the field. Holding number 79 at the distance to the goal. Still first down. So that'll cost the Redskins some yards and only one play remaining for Schuler. Rate the day for Schuler. Good day? No, it, it, it's not a good day because he, he, he didn't, I mean, they didn't come away with a win. And, you know, more than anything, when you're two and nine, you, you want to win. And, and the guys around you won't believe in you until you start to, to put the W on the board, no matter how you get the ball downfield and no matter how it's somebody else's fault that you, you had the short balls dropped. Teammates want to win. That's the last play of the day. And indeed, the Washington Redskins fall to 2 and 10 as Dave Brown and the Giants win at RFK in Washington, D.C. 21 to 19, the final. The Giants on top, and we'll be back to wrap it up in a moment. <laughs> 